Greetings and salutations, internet! It's too damn hot to live. Seriously though, it is really warm and I'm back home! Yay! Yay! Dog sitting was fun, but there really is nothing like your own bed, even if it is in the middle of a very messy room. Um, yeah, so I have no idea what to vlog about this evening. I figured that since I have nothing deep and meaningful to say today, that I would do something fun and dorky instead. And so, I'm going to review Sherlock! Yay! Not the Hollywood blockbuster Sherlock. I'm talking about, um, this Sherlock. There we go. Uh, it airs on the BBC. Yay! Naturally, it's the BBC. Um, what it is, basically, is uh, each series is three 19-minute movies. That's right, 19 minutes, an hour and a half. And... <laughs> Uh, based on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes and uh, but set in a modern-day London instead of a Victorian London and to be honest I was super skeptical when I first heard about this I literally when I heard that they were going to be doing a Sherlock remake and that they would be setting it in modern-day London instead of Victorian London I immediately like blocked it from my mind I'm like nope no way. They're gonna balls that up so bad, There's, it's not gonna be any good. <laughs> what rubbish. And then, the amazing flatmate happened to be watching it one night, and I heard a bit of it, so I came into the living room to find out what all the fuss was about. Yeah, I've been hooked ever since. So this isn't really going to be a review as much as it's going to be me gushing idiotically. I mean, it's awesome. Really good. It was created by Mark Gatiss and Stephen Moffat, the two geniuses behind the Doctor Who remake. Um, so I should never have doubted. Yes. First, the, everybody always talks about the acting, and the acting is incredible. Um, but I want to focus much more on Stephen Moff Moffat and Mark Gatiss. And uh, there's one other writer whose name I think is Stephen Anderson. I'm so sorry if I got that wrong. Please correct me if any of you ever see this. Um, because <laughs> the best actor in the world will not be able to sell anything if it's written poorly. And I don't think that writers get enough credit for how awesome things turn out. Honestly, the writing in this blows my mind. I bow down to the writers. They are incredible. They manage to come up with plots and scripts and dialogue that is funny and intriguing and extremely intelligent and heartbreaking. All the feels! And of course, it works the other way around too, I suppose. The best writers in the world would never get so recognized if the acting was subpar. So there is that. I want to talk about the actors because I think by now, what with War Horse and Parades and, and Star Trek Into Darkness, Benedict Cumberbatch has become something of a household name um, and must be really sick of people mentioning how odd his name is. Because I, I swear to God, in every single interview I've ever seen, everybody starts off with, now let's talk about your name, uh, is absolutely superb as Sherlock Holmes. He, uh, there's something about him, I think, that uh, really sells the intelligence behind Sherlock Holmes. And Sherlock is such, in this series, he's such a compelling character that I really understand why John Watson would hang around despite all the shit that Sherlock puts him through. And I do understand poor Molly Hooper's infatuation with Sherlock. That, that poor girl. I mean, let's face it, Sherlock is kind of, he's my kind of guy, tall, intelligent, completely unattainable. Um, Martin Freeman, we all already know, is a spectacular actor um, who... I kind of love his John Watson. John's such a sweet guy and very forbearing because if I had to put up with Sherlock Holmes, I think 
I would have been put away for murder a long time ago. And I also really, really, really like Rupert Graves' performance as Inspector Lestrade. I... Part of my problem with previous renditions of Sherlock was how grossly incapable they made Detect- uh, he's not Detective Inspector, that's modern. Inspector Lestrade, um, and frankly all of Scotland Yard. I think it detracted from Sherlock's brilliance because it didn't seem to me like it would be all that difficult to be smarter than these people. Um, yeah, Moriarty, who is played by Andrew Scott, is played so well. You really get the sense that he is not so much just a bored gentleman trying to go head to head with Sherlock, but that there's actually screws loose in that brilliant head of his. Oh, the filming is incredible. Uh, I should point that out. The episodes are just, they're beautifully constructed and I love how they get the message across. Sometimes quite literally on the screen, words will pop up or images will flash so that you get an insight into either Sherlock's mind or what precisely is happening on those mobile phones at the current time. You will find if you become uh, engrossed in the Sherlock world that there's quite a rabid fandom and while I would say that I am definitely a fan of the series, I'm not quite that much of a fan. I haven't written any fan fiction. I don't ship any of the characters and I have to say sorry to the John Locke shippers. I'm sorry but it really annoys me. And there's only one reason for it. It's not the, the two guys romantically interested in each other thing that annoys me because whatever. What does annoy me slightly is that by making it a romantic attachment, enormous disservice is done to the power of friendship. It is incredibly powerful and it doesn't have to be romantic at all. That's, that's just my two cents. I haven't read any of the fan fiction, but I have seen like a ton of GIFs. GIFs? GIFs, GIFs. The, the moving picture thingies. Those. Uh, I've seen a ton of them and they're all hilarious. The fandom is smart and savvy and uh, incredibly funny. <laughs> all, all of it came together in like the perfect storm of TV shows. There is there is drama and there is humor and there is like mind-blowing intelligence and everyone involved in this production deserves like 10,000 medals. I highly recommend that you watch BBC Sherlock. Um, I have season one or series one if you're in the UK. Um, on DVD, I will be purchasing series two because I must have. And series three hopefully comes out this year. If you do not have any of the DVDs, and why would you? I believe series one and series two are on Netflix. I don't have one of those sponsorship things like the Philip DeFranco show or SourceFed or anyone. Um, but yeah, Netflix. It's all on Netflix. So go check it out. I liked it. That's the verdict. In fact, I loved it. And I am now a fan despite my initial disinterest, for which I apologize profusely everyone involved. Bye! If I'm not mistaken, Martin Freeman won a BAFTA for Sherlock as Best Supporting Actor. I know, as far as I'm concerned, there should be a BAFTA for Best Smile because Martin Freeman would kind of win that.